it doesn't look particularly happy or healthy and it's not bringing me any joy. So I'm like, why have I still got it? Sometimes plant care isn't all positive and I'm having a morning where I'm not feeling as positive about it. <laughs> As I sometimes am, I have felt very much like I can't give up on it and and I think it's okay to give up. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yuli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And this is a bit of a spontaneous video. I was actually planning on going through and making a favorite plants of the month video today. Um, and I was going through and I was doing some plant chores this morning and I was just having a bit of a frustrating morning. L lots of things went wrong. I knocked plants over, I damaged some plants. I just was having a day where plant care just didn't really feel like it was going right for me. And kind of throughout that, as I was going through and doing planty things, I just realized how many plants I'm holding on to for the sake of it, how many plants I actually am not that in love with anymore. I don't like that much anymore. I don't really know why I've still got them. Ones that are doing weird things for me and aren't making me happy. And although I try and keep things on the whole fairly positive on my channel, I kind of just felt like having a bit of a moan today. So I'm gonna take you through some of the plants that I've brought over to the table that are frustrating me a little bit. <laughs> uh, and I'm potentially considering getting rid of and I can tell you why and we can talk a little bit about that. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Okay, so as usual, these are in no particular order, but I have spoken about this one before in a similar video to this, and I'm kind of annoyed that I'm showing you it again, that I need to just make a decision with this plant and stick with it but it is the Monstera Escaletto. And I got this plant originally as a hand-me-down for my friend Emma's collection. She wasn't getting on particularly well with this plant. And I just thought it was really lovely. I love the fenestrations. It's very similar to the Adansonii in a lot of ways. And I really like that plant. And I just didn't do things right from the off with this plant. I didn't get it onto a moss pole, which is 100% what this plant needs in order to not be constantly putting out these big runners. And if you've owned this plant and you've grown it not on a moss pole, you will absolutely, I can guarantee, know what I mean. It puts out these big, long, stretched bits of growth that don't have any foliage on them and just don't look particularly nice. And I kind of thought to myself, if I'm not doing what this plant needs, if I'm not actually kind of wanting to keep it happy, then is it really making me happy or have I just got it for the sake of having it? And so I did end up chopping it up. I sent out lots of cuttings, I think about five or six months ago, and I kept this one cutting back for myself just in case I regretted it and in case I wanted to kind of try again further down the line. And as you can see, it is really well rooted but I just have really been neglecting it. Like you can tell it's not looking very good. It's got lots of yellowing there. It doesn't look particularly happy or healthy and it's not bringing me any joy. So I'm like, why have I still got it? Why have I still got it? So yeah, although I'd like to love this plant, it's just one that for me is, is not ticking boxes. So it's one that I'm definitely gonna be taking to the next plant swap. There is another plant swap coming up in October and I'm so good at saying that I'll take things and then I go, oh no, but what if I'll love it in a few months time and then I don't end up doing it. But I think I need to just like keep reminding myself of this, that this plant has not been doing it for a while for me now. And therefore, as I say, I know it would be one that makes somebody else much happier than me. It is one that for a lot of people I know is on their wish lists. It's not the most accessible plant in the world where I'm from. You can't kind of just go out to the garden center and find this plant. So why I'm keeping it, as I say, I don't really know, but that's what it's looking like currently. I'm 100% gonna be giving this one away. I hope it finds a lovely home. But yeah, it's one that I've tried with, one that I thought I would feel a certain way about, and I just haven't. And I think that's absolutely fine as well. I know, I, and I'm always, I'm always very good at saying this when I talk about plants that people might not love, or plant burnouts, or plants that I've maybe fallen out of love with, it is totally okay to feel that way about plants. Like not every single plant is gonna do it for you. There's gonna be some that you get like this one that I thought was gonna blow my mind, that I thought was gonna be amazing. And I just 
haven't ha I haven't loved it as much as I thought I would so yeah that's that's the first one and then this is another slightly neglected one and again I think it is savable but it's going to need a bit of rehabbing and I will do that obviously before I pass it along but it is the variegated string of pearls and at one point I was growing this as I say a big full plant it wasn't that big but it had probably four or five times the amount of strands that it's got at the moment and then it got mealybugs and mealybugs on any plant when they kind of take over very quickly can be a nightmare but oh my goodness on the string of pearls they are so frustrating and I think it's actually got if you look at that little bit just there it has still got some mealybugs on it and I've treated this plant so many times, so many times, that every time I get it back to the state where I kind of think it's fine, I'll take my eye off it for a few days and then when I look back, I can see more. So I just don't think I love it enough to keep trying with this plant. And again, I, I kind of feel bad saying I'm giving up with it, but it's it's just one that I don't care enough about, so it's it's not doing it for me. So. So yeah, I think I'm going to give it another very, very thorough treatment. I'm going to continue to keep it in isolation. I might even take some more cuttings of it and kind of essentially start from scratch, lay them on top of soil or something and try it that way. And assuming it's back to a healthy, non-pesty state before the plant swap, then I will 100% be taking it as well to the plant swap. But currently, I I would be ashamed if it left my collection in the state because it's obviously just not doing very well. Um, but again, that's totally on me. I've got lots of plants that I probably over care for. And then I've just got a few here and there that just get pushed to the side. And often when I look at them and think about why I've pushed them to the side, it is because I have fallen out of love with them. And that, unfortunately, is one. Um, and then this one, this is this, okay, so I haven't fallen out of love with this plant. It is the Variegated Monstera Albo, uh, and it's putting out some beautiful growth. It is actually a plant that I really, really love, but I have chopped and propagated this plant so many times that I have now got, I think, about eight or nine of this size of Variegated Monstera Albo in my collection, and... I, like, I know I always say that if you love a plant, or for me, if I love a plant, I don't mind having duplicates, and I'm not going back on that, I do definitely feel that way, but again, like, this, this one is just taking over, it's taking over, and I'm caring for it, or caring for them, for them, sorry, out of just, like, habit now, I'm not getting any joy from a lot of them, like, my big one I love, I've got one through in my bedroom that I love, but these ones... A kind of they've just kind of become space fillers and I thought about chopping them up and sending out cuttings and in fact with a couple of my older plants I did do that and I have taken some to the plant swaps and stuff like that but I think it's time for me to just let go of the six or seven that I'm keeping for the sake of keeping because I, yeah like I, I don't give them enough attention and they're not as I say they're not bringing me as much joy as I would like them to be and for me, it's definitely not about making money with this plant. So, like, I would just like to know that it's found a good home. Um, I think I can also be really quite lazy as well, because the amount of times I've thought to myself, well, why don't I just box them up, like, put a thing on Instagram, people will want them, I can send them out to good homes, and then bish, bash, bosh, done. Um, but the thought of getting all the packaging and then packing them up and going to the post office, that just, for me, has just been like, oh, you know what, I would prefer to just meet someone in person and be like, there you go. That I know is just me being very, very lazy. But yeah, I'm finally at the stage now where I feel like I'm ready to part with them. They are in very good, healthy states. So as I say, again, I think I will be taking a lot of them to the next plant swap. The next plant swap that I'm going to is also in London. So it's a little bit easier for me to get to and it will mean that I can bring more things and kind of bigger things with me as well. So. So yeah, it's not that I don't like the plant. I think you can just sometimes have too much of a good thing. And I think that is what I have done here with this one. So yeah, that's that's why I'm feeling that way about the Variegated Monstera. Um, and then another one that has again been on this list before, and I've said so many times, I'm gonna give this plant one more chance. And 
I've, I've, I just, I'm, I'm giving up now. I give up with this plant. It is the Philodendron Soderoi Aff, and there's not a huge amount to show you at the moment because I've chopped it up so many times. It is putting out a new leaf just there. But this is one that I have just had struggle after struggle after struggle with. I think every time I've got it to a stage where it looks lovely and healthy, it's been brought down by spider mites very, very quickly. I'm usually fairly good at getting spider mite infestations under control, but you know how sometimes some plants are just a complete magnet for them? That is how this one is. And I, at the moment, have got it through my bedroom cabinet, which is like my rehab cabinet. And it's doing okay in there. As you can see, it is putting out new growth. But because I've done this chop back and try again so many times, this time I'm just kind of thinking, you know what? I don't like, I'm not that interested in trying again. It just stresses me out. And although the plant is beautiful, it like there's a lot of reasons why I also don't want this plant. Like it is another crawler. The the true Sodroy is an upright plant and I love that one, but the Sodroy Aff is a crawler. They take up a lot of space. You need to grow them in big trough planters. And it's not one that I would go out and get for myself now. So I'm like, why am I still going with this one? Why am I still going? Um, so again, I think it will probably be another plant swap one and the great thing about the plant swaps is obviously you can take things that aren't making you happy that aren't bringing you a lot of joy and you can get something in return that is going to make you happy uh because yeah this this one although i know it is beautiful once it gets going it's just one that i haven't gotten well with and yeah i cannot be bothered to give my energy to anymore um i just want to say as well with all of these plants i know i'm having a real bitch here and a real moan up about a lot of them. I am still absolutely going to continue to care for them. I'm not going to just let them go in like an awful state. I, I, they're still plants and I still want to feel like I'm doing good things for them as much as I can in the time that I've got them. But, but yeah, I'm just a bit exhausted with some of them. Um, and then this next one I've spoken about quite a lot recently as well. It's the Amedrium Medium Silver. Uh, and I'm kind of torn with this one. I don't know whether or not it's time to bite the bullet and get it gone because I love the foliage of the plant. I think it's really lovely. But as I've said before, and actually very similarly to what I said about the Monstera Escaletto, it is classic for putting out these runners. But also similarly to what I said about the Escaletto, I haven't got this one onto a moss pole. So how much do I really care? I've had this plant for two years now maybe and I just have not done good things for it in the time that I've owned it. I air layered this section just here about a year and a half ago so that I could get it onto a moss pole. Oh, was that my plan? Or oh, chop and propagate it. I can't even remember. Um, but it's still like that and I've done nothing about it so I did take some wet stick cuttings of the runners very recently and I've got a few of them to root so far. There's a few that have just gone mouldy but I'm gonna potentially see if I can get some growth going, some foliage growth with those and maybe pot it back up and get the whole thing on a moss pole, maybe. But if it doesn't work with the wet stick propagations, then this is another one that I am gonna be getting rid of just because it's it just feels more hassle than it's worth for me at the moment. And I know for some people this plant seems to grow beautifully. And as I say, plants can do better for different people, different environments. It's just one that is, has been more grief than happiness for me in the time that I've owned it. So why am I holding on to it? I don't know. Um, I think it's the potential of the plants that I'm excited about, but it's been a while and I have not been even attempting to bring out its potential. So, so yeah, that's one that I might get rid of as well. I kind of just wanted to talk this through and voice all of this out loud, to be honest. If you guys have got any thoughts or opinions or things that you might do differently, please let me know in the comments. I just wanted to have a planty rant today because these ones are just kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. <sighs> but yeah, that's where I'm that's where I'm at with it at the moment. Um, and another one, this one's not doing well is the blue star fern. And this was another one that Emma gave to me a while back and and I like it, I like it, but I just, again, I haven't done the right things for this plant. And I'm so good here on YouTube at preaching about, oh, you should do this for this plant, that plant really likes that. 
and I just haven't taken the time to kind of do it with this plant. So yeah, it has lost a lot of its foliage and it's not looking particularly happy. It's incredibly bare. There's a section at the back here that I'm pretty sure has died off. So it probably needs a thorough repot, a prune back and kind of a, a I was gonna say a do over. That's a very American thing to say. Um, start over again and just kind of start from scratch. But I'm actually looking at it now and I can see it is putting out some new growth at the top there. So that's really encouraging. Uh, but it's another one that I just don't think, oh God, I've also, I've had it next to a wig, a blue wig, and I can see bits of blue hair in the soil. Um, yeah, it's one that I just think would make somebody else happier than it's making me. And I think any plants that you're finding to be a real struggle and you're not enjoying kind of, I don't know, I've got some plants that are quite difficult to care for, but I really enjoy trying to figure it out with them. I've got plants as well, like my philodendron golden dragon that I totally did not like when I first got and thought about getting rid of, and then I fell back in love with it. So I'm not saying that that won't happen here. I'm just saying that I think it's, it's pretty unlikely, but yeah, as I say, the new growth is encouraging at least. But yeah, it is one that I think is probably ready to find a new home. Um, and then I've got the, oh, I'm forgetting which ones I've spoken about. Um, the Ficus tinnicky just here, which is a plant that I used to absolutely love. And again, this is one that I have spoken about in videos similar to this one before, about plants that I'm thinking of getting rid of. And I think... Like, I don't hate this plant. I do still really love, like, the textures, the, the textures, like, the patterns within its, its variegation on its leaves. I think it's very pretty. Um, but it's got so big now. It takes up so much space. And I, I really neglect this plant. It's one that I just don't feel like I give a lot of my time to. And again, as I have said with others in this video, often that is a very telling sign for me as to whether or not a plant is actually making me happy. And I think the main reason that I'm holding on to this one is just because I've, it was kind of one of my earlier plants. It's one that I've had since it was really, really small. And I feel proud of it. I feel proud of the journey that I've been on with this plant. But I think I just need to remind myself sometimes that just because just because I've got the, a plant to a certain level, it doesn't mean that I need to stick by its side forever. I can give it to someone else who's gonna love and appreciate the plant. And that's so much better than it just sitting in my flat for the sake of it, because, because I grew up from a little plant, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is a very, very easy plant on the whole to care for. It can be quite susceptible to overwatering, but I have been doing completely the opposite. I've been neglecting it and massively underwatering it. And for that reason, it has got a little bit of brown and discoloration on some of its leaves and around the side. So you can see the variegation has just gone a little bit crispy and that's purely down to me not, not doing enough for it. So, so yeah, I think the other thing that's kind of stopped me from getting rid of it before and this sounds like such a silly thing to say but the the spot that I've got it in in my bedroom because obviously it's quite a big plant now the spot I've got it in in my bedroom I think would look very very bare if I didn't have anything there and when I look at my room as a whole and not focus on the specific plant I like the look of it because I like the look of like leaves and foliage but when I actually spend time looking at the plant I'm like mm, I don't know so yeah, like I've also obviously got a lot of other plants like packed into quite a small space in the grand scheme of it. So it's not like I can't find another plant that I actually really do love to go there in its place. So, so yeah, I think it might be time now for it to find a new home. And again, maybe I'll plant swap it. I don't think it's one that I'd want to chop up. Obviously, if I give it to someone else and they choose to chop it up, then that is their choice. But I'm not sure I could bring myself to do that. So, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that one at the moment. And in fact, I'm feeling very similar still in regards to my pink princess philodendron, which I didn't bring through because she's very, very big, but I'll put a clip in. Um, I, I just don't really know how I'm feeling about that one at the moment. Again, I'm caring for her kind of just out of like, the routine that I've got into. Again, it's another one that I feel very proud of because I've grown her from a one leaf cutting. 
And because I know with the Pink Princess, it is a plant that at one point made me unbelievably happy. I kind of just hope that that feeling comes back, but it has been quite a while now and I'm just like, I'm, I'm not really feeling it. So, so yeah, I mean, again, like I've had different opinions from you guys, some of you saying, oh, why don't you chop it up? Or one of my friends recently said, why don't you just take some cuttings and pop them back in with the plant and get it a bit fuller? And it's not even about the fullness, I don't think, for me. It's just about the fact that, it, it, I don't know, it's just, it's just not making me as happy as it could. So that's another one that's very, very big now. And I would have a lot more space if I didn't have it. So, oh, maybe, maybe I'll make the chop on that one. But I don't know. I, I'm still trying to gauge how I feel about it with that one because I don't want to make any rash decisions just in case. But I've been saying this for a while now, so maybe I need to just make a decision and stick with it. I don't know. Um, but then another one that I've got, kind of for the sake of having, is this peace lily. And this came to me, my next door neighbours moved out about six months ago, and bless them, they dropped around some plants for me before they left. They were like, we know you love plants, we've got some. And I actually love some of the plants that they dropped around, but the peace lily, is one that I haven't had in my collection for a while just because I did get to the stage with it before that I I was just like, I, I'm not, I don't know. It's not bringing me that much joy. I don't think I need it. I gave that one to my mum and it's actually doing amazingly for her. Um, but this piece lily wasn't looking particularly happy when I first got it and I did a big root prune. I pruned back a lot of foliage and it's doing better than it was. Like, I, although it has got a little bit of a yellowy tinge to it, as you can see, it is putting out some lovely new growth. But so why, I, I don't really know why I've still got it. I think because they gave it to me, I feel bad saying that I don't want it anymore. But realistically, I'm sure there's someone else even that lives in my building that would be willing to give it a nice home and it isn't a particularly difficult plant either um but yeah I've just kind of had it for the last five six months because it was a gift from them and that's really the only reason because I don't particularly want a peace lily at the moment uh, it's another one that's quite a big plant as well so it's taking up a lot of space that I could put things that I really like and I don't know if you can tell behind me but my cabinet is stuffed to the brim at the moment and in fact quite recently I have just started feeling like I I mean I know I've got a lot of plants I love having a lot of plants but I'm not able to kind of appreciate them individually because I am having to pack so much in together because my, my collection is feeling a little bit cluttered so I think sometimes having these kind of conversations and thinking about maybe what you can pass along is not a bad thing. Um, it's not because I hate these plants, it's just because there's, there's things that, I don't know, there's things that I'm hoarding and I don't want to be hoarding. Um, and on that note, the Pateris Albo Lineata Fern that I got when I first moved in here, so probably about nine months ago now, uh, the one that died off within about a week of me having it and then lots of you said I'll just chop it back, put put something over it for humidity and then it will grow back and it'll be lovely again. Um, so it's it's kind of grown back, it's grown back very weirdly and I just don't really like it, I don't, I don't like the way that it's growing and it's another one that I think I'm probably just holding on to because I've rehabbed it and because it's now giving me growth I feel like I should automatically just fall in love with the plants again. And, and again, like I'm, I'm so sure that someone else would want this one. I, I don't know, it feels very different to the plant that I originally purchased. And I know that when you chop a plant back, obviously it can grow back very differently, but it hasn't got any of the lovely kind of variegation it had on its leaves before. It's a little bit misshapen. Maybe it's just not loving life in my environment. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just not the plant for me, but as you can see, it's got some foliage down here that's gone very almost translucent and a little bit rotten. I've changed out its soil. I've, I've done all the, I think, kind of right things for it, but it's just not making me happy. And I have felt very much like I can't give up on it. And, and I think it's okay to give up. I will, as I say, rehome it. It's not like I'm throwing it in the bin, but, um, but yeah, it's one that I think is time it's time to pass along. 
Um, and then I've got a few more, and these aren't ones that I hate by any means. And in fact, I'm going to start with one that actually is one of my favourite plants. This is just a bit of a frustration that I thought I would squeeze into this video. Um, so my Hoya Latifolia Sarawak, I talk about this one all the time. As I have said many, many times, it's a plant that brings me so much joy and I do truly love. And I am definitely, definitely, definitely not getting rid of. However, it is very slow to grow. And I know I've said before that its growth is very rewarding. And it is. When it gives you new growth, it is the most amazing thing in the world. But yet again, it's given me one of these really long runners. And I have tried tendrilling, uh, sorry, trellising the tendrils before. Um, but this time it started just kind of putting out new growth by itself. And I was like, oh, that's exciting. But the same thing has happened as the last time. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell on camera. But can you see the little leaf just there? And it's happening all the way along that main, yeah, you can see the other one there. Um, the main tendril is just yellowing and dying back. And I don't know why this is. Like, I feel like the reason I'm frustrated with this plant at the moment is because it keeps giving me false hope. It keeps going, woohoo, look what I'm gonna do. And then, and then it just dies for no reason. The rest of the plant is really happy. It's giving me all of these peduncles. So it's obviously getting ready to flower again. Um, but yeah, look, I just, I just pull one off. Like all the little leaves are just wilting oops and dying back and i don't know why that is um and i know i've asked for your advice in regards to chopping the peduncles as well before like whether or not i just chop them all back i don't want to do that it is beautiful when it flowers but right now i would prefer it to be giving me more foliage as opposed to flowers um, I am also aware that Hoyas flower from the same peduncle. I know some of you have said, you know, if you chop them back, you won't ever get them again from the same spot. I do know that. I know it's a risk that I may be taking, but I just want foliage and it's not giving me foliage. So, so yeah, I, um, I now don't know what to do about this tendril. I'm like, do I chop it back? Do I completely chop it back? Because all of the little leaves are dying off. What do I do? I don't know. I don't know. This is just a, I don't know, a personal stress of mine that <laughs> I think I just got myself overly excited because, because it started doing stuff. Um, and I don't really know why I brought this one over because again, this isn't one that I'm getting rid of. Uh, in fact, I might get rid of some sections of it, but obviously I chopped up my White Princess Philodendron fairly recently and it's growing back beautifully. Um, but I've got so many sections around my flat of the White Princess now. And like I said earlier in this video, with some plants, I don't mind having duplicates. Like if I've got, like, for example, with certain types of aglaonema, I could have the Silver Queen around my house. In fact, I do in multiple places. And that plant just makes me really happy. But for some reason with the White Princess, I don't particularly like having lots of her. I enjoyed my full plants when she was a full plant. And... I, I don't know, just having lots of bits of her isn't really doing it for me. So I've decided that I'm going to pot her up because she has got now a really good root system. Um, I'm going to pot her up and get a lovely full plant going again. And the bits that I'm left with, if there are any bits left, because I've got a lot of sections, I am going to pass on to other homes because I don't need any more of this plant. And I feel like it's another one that could end up getting neglected and pushed to the bottom of the list. And... I really don't want that to be the case. I want to enjoy my plant care and 99% of the time I do. But today's just been a day where I've just gone, oh, this feels this feels a bit much. And I feel like I'm doing lots for plants that I actually don't care about that much. So that is why I needed this vent today. Um, and then finally, I've got more actually that I could talk about, but I think these are the main ones. Finally, this is one that I've spoken about again fairly recently, the Philodendron varicosum. And this is actually the healthiest this plant has ever looked for me. So I'm showing you her at her best right now. Um, but this is, this is one that I am also on my final try with. I have not gotten well with this plant in the past. Very similarly actually to what I said about the Sodoroy F. It's been one that has been an absolute magnet for spider mites for me. And, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's so gorgeous. And I really wish that it would do well for me. But I, um, I've, I've been 
I don't know, I've been so stressed by this plant over the years of trying to grow it that I'm getting to the point now where if it doesn't work this time, I give up. I do, I give up and I don't like saying that, but I've got lots of hybrids of the varicosum that I love, but the pure varicosum for me is currently a bit of a struggle and the only reason it's looking so fantastic and gorgeous at the moment is because it's in my bedroom cabinet that is very very sealed off i don't i don't run any fans in there currently it's it's literally just like a completely sealed environment even more so than this cabinet because i've shower sealed it shut it's got 90 percent humidity most days very very warm no pests i am very very vigilant with my pest checking in that cabinet and i have therefore managed to keep it safe so far but it is coming to the point now where it's getting quite big and i am gonna have to take it out of that cabinet so yeah this is, this is my last try and fingers crossed it will be successful and fingers crossed I can get a beautiful full plant going off this one because its foliage is gorgeous. I love its petioles. I love the beautiful backs to the leaves. It ticks so many boxes, but, but it's not worth having lots of plants that stress you out, is it? So yeah. I um I feel like I've just spoken at you for a very long time and I'm I'm sorry but yeah sometimes as I say sometimes plant care isn't all positive and I'm having a morning where I'm not feeling as positive about it <laughs> as I sometimes am but I do feel better having spoken about this so if you guys have got plants that are giving you grief ones that you're maybe holding on to for the sake of it Drop me a comment down below let's have a chat about it it does feel better and it sometimes just helps you to process the ones that you want and the ones that you don't and and yeah that's why the plant community is so wonderful because it's nice to just be able to chat about these things and know that there's people that get it <laughs> so um so yeah thank you for listening and if you've got any tips with any of these plants I'm not like the ones that I've said I am adamant that I am getting rid of I'm not going back on that now I need to be strict for myself but if any of you have got anything that you go, ah, oh, well, you know what, with, with my varicosum, I did this one thing and then it turned a corner, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers.